That was a really good stop. I think we definitely made the right decision coming to this place. Undoubtedly, some of the most exciting birds that pass through during spring migration are the warblers. Quick, cute, and bright. These birds are extremely diverse in their behaviors and colors. This diversity, along with the challenge of finding and getting good looks at them, makes warbler migration a can't miss for birders and photographers alike. Today, we're in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, on a mission to try and find as many warbler species as possible. Morning everybody, Derek here from Badgerland Birding. In Milwaukee with Ryan and our friend Nathaniel, and we're also meeting up with our friends Chris and Colette. And uh, we're looking for as many warbler species as possible. We had a nice rose-breasted grosbeak on the way in, and Nathaniel just picked out a northern perula, so we're trying to get looks at that, and a black-throated green as well. Our first stop was a well-known warbler hotspot called Warnemont Park and it didn't take long to realize that it was going to be an eventful day. I actually had a ton of stuff in here. There's the Prula making its zipper noise, so it's like that high-pitched trill, and then uh, yellow rumped palm, black third green was singing. That's that Perula trill, if you can hear it. And then also in Nashville, so tons of diversity. We just got here. After scanning the trees in the immediate area and picking up a handful of warbler species, we moved east into a new habitat. We actually started on the edge of this golf course, um, kind of before the tea time started. So we just walked the forest next to the actual course, and now we're going into more like the wooded area. But any kind of edge habitat where you have like forest, then it drops off is normally a good spot. Warblers anywhere by water is normally decent too. Almost as soon as we made it into the woods, we were greeted by a plethora of bird songs, including a species that sings a beautiful melodic tune. Spent about 15 minutes tracking this wood thrush down. They have one of the most beautiful songs in the U.S., I would say. Uh, it's very kind of like ethereal sounding, and it, it's perfect for this like wooded, kind of a little like misty morning. It's just uh, it's a, it's a beautiful song, so it was, it was neat to finally see that bird making its song. But there's so much going on, it's hard to focus on one thing. I'm like looking at this beautiful wood thrush, and then I'm like, ah, there's other warblers I could be looking at. So it's hard to, hard to not have your attention kind of split all over the place. There's definitely a crazy amount of bird songs and calls right now. You can probably hear the wood thrush in the background, that blue-winged warbler in the background. And that's a really great way to find things during this time of year is to know the call and listen for it because you're not going to always get a lot of looks at things up in the treetops or if the trees are really leafy or if the underbrush is really thick. So a lot of the time when you're listening, that's the best way to find stuff this time of year. While the birding at Warnemont Park was definitely good, Reports of some uncommon to rare species at another location prompted us to move on early. Here at uh, Warnemont Park, we had some good birds. We found blue-winged warbler, we heard oven bird, we heard some common yellow throats. So there was a couple herd-only species, but we did get eyes on some as well. I hear that wood thrush still calling too in the background. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, but we're gonna go a little bit farther up north and we're gonna try and find one of the more rare species that I haven't seen in years, the worm-eating warbler. And also keep your eyes out for golden wing too. Before leaving, we had to make one more stop to help out a local amphibian. Look at that cutie. We do not want him to get run over by the golf course lawnmower, so we're gonna put him in the woods. First toad of the season. After a 20 minute drive, we arrived at our next location, hopeful that it would prove to be a warbler gold mine. Just switched locations, so we're heading into Shorewood Nature Preserve. This is a place I've never birded before. Um, hopefully we'll be able to find the worm-eating warbler. It was reported earlier, which is why we headed to this location. We began walking down the somewhat steep trail into the preserve, where we heard a flurry of bird songs and calls. Upon making it down the trail and into a heavily wooded area, 
we met up with a bustling group of birders who were moving about trying to get glimpses of the wide assortment of bird species hopping around. There's like a whole squad of area birders here now, so people are kind of picking stuff out. There was a summer tanager that reported yesterday that was just refound, and we went and got that. It's way up in a tree, so it's tough to see, but count it, summer tanager, that's a rare one. Uh, the worm eating has not made an appearance yet, but I'm hoping that if we stay here long enough, we can get it. We started scanning through the gorgeous emerald-colored habitat along the edge of Lake Michigan. We found a few different thrush species, including Swainson thrushes and Viries. In terms of warblers, this spot was a stronghold for blue-winged warblers, as well as a few new species, including magnolia warblers and chestnut-sided warblers. Additionally, we heard one of our target species. Located a golden wing, but it's like right in the middle of all this thick stuff, so we hear it singing super loud, but we just can't see it. Eventually, the golden wing warbler came into view, just long enough to let us get some good looks. We were quite happy to locate one tough-to-find warbler species, but it was only the beginning of a string of nice finds at the preserve. This has been a totally wild day for migration so far. We were all trying to get looks at this golden wing warbler, and then uh, I moved further to the north, and then someone got eyes on a white-eyed vireo, which is rare for this state in this time of year, and then somebody refound the worm-eating warbler. So got quick looks at the white-eyed, got quick looks at the worm-eating warbler, but it's just been a crazy day, honestly. Both the white-eyed vireo and worm-eating warbler provided only brief views, but we were still extremely happy to be able to add these birds that are rare in the north to our list. That's the first worm-eating warbler I think I've seen in like years. Basically since I started birding there was one that showed up and I saw it, and since then it's been a worm-eating warbler drought, so this was a really good bird to get. It's been an absolutely crazy day. We had a white-eyed vireo that somebody found and then the worm-eating was where you found. Helps to have so many good birders out looking, but this isn't really a huge area and stuff just keeps getting reported, but like it'll only be there for a little bit and then it'll kind of disappear or move on. So it's kind of important to be in the right place at the right time, but incredible day so far. Feeling great about our find so far, we kept on walking the trails, finding a black and white warbler in addition to many of the same species we had already seen. How are we feeling, back. boys? We've got pretty much everything that was reported here, I think. Um, we didn't get black burnian that other people had, but maybe we can pick that up still someplace. Almost as soon as the words were spoken, a male black burnian warbler came into view. After seeing one of the most beautiful warbler species in the entire country, we decided to move on to a new spot. That was a really good stop. I think we definitely made the right decision coming to this place. And uh, it's getting to be midday now, so the activity has stopped a little bit, or at least slowed down. But maybe at one of these other places something real will show up, or maybe we'll have to come back here again. Next up, we went to one of the most popular destinations for migratory birds in eastern Wisconsin. We have now moved to Lake Park, so hopefully we can find some more warblers here. Uh, Chris and Colette were here a little while ago and they had a black throated blue, so that's kind of our main target here. We walked the top of the ravines, where other than some sparrows, it was fairly quiet. That changed when we got to a bridge where it seemed the warblers were congregated. We found some interesting birds in this location, including a red-breasted nuthatch. For warblers, new additions were black throated blue, and an extremely drab looking pine warbler. Next, we went to another area hotspot, Weir Nature Center, in hopes of finding at least one more new warbler species. We just moved to what may be our last location for the day, Weir Nature Center. There was a morning warbler reported here earlier today, so hopefully we'll find that. We could also find some water thrushes by the water. Um, everything kind of feels like gravy at this point, because I think we've done really well, but hopefully we can tick on some more warbler species. Walking along a creek, we found a solitary sandpiper, several rose-breasted grosbeaks, and a warbling vireo, in addition to one of the warblers we were hoping for. We were able to pick up northern water thrush here, which is awesome. That was one I was hoping to find. Uh, they can be kind of elusive. They'll be normally by the sides of water, kind of walking up and down, and they'll bob the butt, the water thrushes. At the end of the day, we finished with 19 warbler species and 80 total bird species. It was a solid day of birding that included a handful of birds that are rare for the region, and a lot of fun with our group of birders, all working together to get eyes on each species. We will certainly go out again looking for more warblers, but until then, thanks for watching. 
We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.